This is Twit. Well, hey, hey, hey. How are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. And we got something special here for hour two of the tech guy show today. And a great friend has joined me. Uh, you may or may not know that for years I have used a very special microphone uh, from a company called Heil Sound. I use a PR40. And I first found the PR40 back in 2005, I think. Uh, I won one as a as a prize at one of the first podcast expos. And I fell in love. It was one of those things I couldn't stop playing with my voice, talking. I loved this microphone so much. And that's when I met my bestest buddy, Bob Heil, who I just adore. Bob Heil's a legend in our industry because he was a sound man for some of the best bands in the world, including The Who. And uh, is also, from for amateur radio enthusiasts, a legend because his microphones are widely used by hams. And uh, for the first time ever, I am now seeing the Heil Sound Warehouse. Hello, Bob Heil. Well, hi, Leo, and greetings to everybody. Yes, we've never done a show together from here. We're in Fairview Heights, Illinois. If I go stand on the roof, I can see the great uh, St. Louis Arch. We're about 12 miles away from That's it. so cool. It's so yeah, nice to see your offices. I've, Bob hosts a regular show every Wednesday night on our, uh, on our Twit network called Ham Nation. How long have you been doing Ham Nation? Uh, I think... It was your idea, by the way, and I think we started this in 2010. We just did wow. program 346. That's so awesome. You and Gordo and the gang are Gordo. so mm -hmm. great and, got, of course, got me into being a ham. I'm a bad ham, though. I have all the equipment. Ray Novak from uh, uh, the fabulous um, uh, no, ICOM. ICOM gave me so much. I have the best Radio Shack in the world, but I never go on because... Well, I talk too much on the radio as it is. I get <laughs> yeah. home, I want to shut up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you've been doing something on Ham Nation uh, that is really cool, the Pine Board Project. Tell me well, about the, that. What goes on here, it, from day one, we've always tried to get people to build. And I, I kind of invented a little segment called Smoke and Solder. And uh, we did a few, but it, oh, it's hard to do it all at the same time. So we got a broadcast engineer George, George and George great. Thomas is amazing oh, and yeah. he builds all kinds of things but I, I wanted to do something a little special and I started out building a little mic preamp uh, on a piece of pine board this is the way we did it back in the 30s 40s 50s and when I got into this hobby in 1956 we were doing things like that this happens to be the front end of a Fender Twin Reverb uh, a guitar amp the preamp of it and I, I thought, wow, let's go. So we started in building little pieces of it, and it became really popular. Uh, we've got over 100 people, and we know that from the count of people buying parts. And here's a, here's a picture of the pine board. There it is right there. Now, who would build this, and uh, what, what would you do with this? this is for, you'd well, have to you have an amateur on, radio license, right, to do yeah, this? Yeah, you put yeah. it on the air. It's AM. And... Uh, Wait a minute, we I can have, have a little AM transmitter in my house? Yeah, we're going to turn it on here in just a minute. Uh, let, let me go through a few things. What we did is we had to first build a power supply. So that was on its own little board. And you'll notice we laced the cables in today's I know, world. They so pretty. Wiretap them down. And back in those days, we took it was waxed. Uh, lines and we would lace those cables. Then I built the preamp, but I put some equalization in the Ooh. mix. So we've got equalization and a high boost. And then we built the final. Now, this final has been through about three or four rebuilds. This one is pretty crazy. This one is band switching. You'll see that switch on the front. Let me get the camera set up over there. So this is this is I mean I grew up with Heath Kit. This is a yeah. this is kind of like a Heath Kit. It is. Except and, and you get all the parts yourself and put yep. it together. Yep. And you'll learn a whole heck of a lot about electronics and about amateur radio. Uh, wait a minute, Bob. I see some vacuum tubes in there. Is that thing Whoa. using vacuum tubes? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Where do you get absolutely. those? Oh, we get all of the parts from a company in Mesa called Antique Electric Supply. <laughs> and they 
<laughs> they have pine board kits now oh. in their catalog. They have the pine board uh, power supply. They have the pine board mic preamp. And they have the pine board final. And that's how we know there's over 100 people building. And we know there's a lot more because they keep running out of parts. Uh, let's do something fun. I'm going to turn it around backwards. This really looks cool as well. Uh, you'll notice on the back there's a light bulb sticking out the back. Well, in the old days and my, these days, we use that as a dummy load so i'm going to turn it on oh so it's not just for aesthetics that actually is using up some juice oh yeah here we go i just put it into transmit now I'm gonna yep and i'm gonna <laughs> tune it up and the old light will come on here in just a minute so that coil in the back that's the tuner we're looking at that no that's the final that's the coil. final we're gonna okay. resonate it here in a minute okay and there it's it comes you, you there you are wow and and the that light comes on and what does that mean well, that's that's instead of an have, antenna. Well, that, that's five watts on 160 meters. <laughs> uh, the crystal in here is on wow. uh, 1985. Isn't that cool? And then I can switch the switch, and the next uh, crystal's up. That's 3885. Now we're on 75 meters, but I got to go tune it. And there we are on 75 meters. And uh, yep. yes, you can use meters to do that, but uh, I'm still an old dog, and I know it's only five watts, and uh, a 47 light bulb works great. Now, how, <laughs> by the way, how uh, how far can five watts go? Is that a lot or a little? I mean, I'm used to radio transmitters that have 100,000 watts or 50,000 well, watts. I have a group down in uh, North Carolina, the club has started a whole pine board project. They have pine board nets. And uh, the other day, uh, one of the guys in North Carolina worked uh, one of our MoCam debt net up in Columbia, Missouri. And so uh, with with good conditions and, and stuff, you can work uh, hundreds, if not a thousand miles. Wow. Because AM also has some skips, right? So that gives you a little bit more... Well, the, on that. yeah, that that particular f frequency, we we can do that at night when uh, when things are better. Yeah, but I know because I used to listen to the radio late at night. Yeah, so yeah. you can get yeah, all I the don't... parts for this at an antique electronics supply. But where can I get the information about how to make this thing? You go to our website. A wonderful thing happened on the way to the uh, whole project. <laughs> yeah. I, th you know how valuable the chat room is. Oh, we have a wonderful chat room here, and they really we love have, Ham Nation. Yes, we have a whole group of them. And, and the first, I started with a whiteboard drawing the schematics, and they were terrible. <laughs> and one, one of the guys said, I think I can help you. Boy, did he. Look at these drawings that he does. Oh, they're beautiful. They're better than Heathkit. Oh, that's gorgeous. And they're big, too. Makes it easy to read. And, well, the thing about that, Leo, you don't need a schematic. Well, we, we also have the schematics. But if you have all the parts, just lay them out like this and it'll work. Yeah. Uh, here, yeah. Here's the power supply. Look at that. And, and it's it's really wonderful. Now, now you have to be a, a, a licensed am amateur to use this, right? Yes. Can yes, you be yes, a technician yes. or do you have to have a general? No. Well... If you wanted to build it for six meters, but we haven't done that yet. Okay. But uh, things are working that uh, the FCC is working on uh, giving the technician a little bit more room and uh, band, uh, bandwidth. So we might have that coming too. So you but, need to be a general right now. And what's, yes. the, what's the website again that I can send people to? Okay. Here's, here's what you want to do. You go to HeilSound.com. Yep. H-E-I-L-S-O-U-N-D. Yep. Down at the way bottom. This has nothing to do with microphones and stuff. The website does. But you go way down at the bottom, and we've got about 50 or 60 pages and a lot of comments in all of these famous drawings that have become famous now. Uh, it, the whole pine board section is right there. Oh, look at that. I see it right there. So click and the a, amateur another... radio button and go to the pine board site. Ha Bob, hang on for a bit. we got to take a break. Bob Heil, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Leo Laporte, the uh, tech guy. We're uh, talking to Bob Heil, legendary sound man, amateur radio enthusiast. In fact, I think Bob Heil's probably created more hams 
than, <laughs> and I mean that in a good way, <laughs> more hams than anybody in the world. His show, Ham Nation, is a must-listen to. It's every Wednesday on our Twit network, and you can go to twit.tv slash HN to subscribe to that. And we've been talking about well, this really cool, kind of old-school, Heathkit-style project for building a, a ham radio that operates uh, on the AM band. It's called the Pine Board Project. And we had to we had to take a break, but Bob, you were telling me that you can get all the information on this if you go to Heil Sound, Bob's site, H E I L S O U N D dot com. Click the amateur radio side of that and then scroll down a little bit. You'll see the whole pine board project here. And this would be for you 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 could do I think an adult would need to do this, but it would be a great project to do uh, with a young person who wants to learn more about electronics and so forth, right? Well I we have, I know, a 12-year-old girl. We have some wow. teenagers. With, one of them is his uncle, who is a ham. Uh, a number of clubs are taking this on as a project. Oh, great project and, for a club. Yeah. 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 And then, after they build a few of them, they have a net. And one of the cool clubs is up in Fairbanks, Alaska. <laughs> they, they've got a pine board uh, Saturday afternoon uh, a workshop and uh, every once in a while I'll tune in a Skype with them and they're building pine boards and getting ready to have their own net uh, where they all get on at wow. a specific time all with their pine boards. So we have really created something so much so that the uh, ARRL, the American Radio Relay League, they picked up on this and uh, in their DIY issue of January, uh, I wrote the article and they published it. Not only did they publish it, it was on the cover. Oh, look at that on QST. Wow, that's awesome. And then I just got this a few weeks ago. It won the cover award. No kidding. And that's awarded by the readers that vote on oh, the different neat. articles. So we're very, very excited about this because it's turning a lot of people onto ham radio in the building prospect. It, yeah, it, it tells me there's real interest. I kind of, I'm really, in a way, gratified to see this because we now live in kind of this age of disposable technology. Nobody knows how it works. Nobody understands how it works. You can't even replace the battery. You just throw it out when it's done. And this is the exact opposite, where you know how it works. You built it yourself. You learn a lot about it. It's one of the reasons I'm a big supporter of amateur radio in general is it brings it back to knowing what you're doing, understanding what you're doing. Exactly. One of the other things we do is George Thomas. Uh, he comes on uh, um, after we do a segment or so and explains how does a 12AX7 tube work? How does the equalizer work? What's, that, what's those big things in the power supply? He explains <laughs> it in very cool, low, <laughs> low, low mentality, low as tech. I call it. Not I low it. mentality, low tech. It's really, really cool. <laughs> he dumbs and, it down, huh? <laughs> yeah, George, is, George is the best. And uh, Gordon West, who has really done a lot for this hobby with all of his uh, books and his, uh, to, to get our license, uh, he really helps us. Then we got Valerie doing all of the, the contest work and all these great people. Amanda watches the chat room, and that's really something because it's just team. fired yeah. up all the time. But, of course, in but, Gordo's books and tapes are how I got my uh, license. I'm a general. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and it really made it so much easier. Uh, one of well, these days I'm going for the advance. I'm going to get the new books, okay. and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the next step on that. One one of the things that just happened, I just got this yesterday, the FCC just put in an, another license count. Amateur radio is now up over 750,000. Wow. And, and it just grows like crazy. And a lot of people say, oh, is it dead? No. And what's driving it, Leo, is the digital things. A lot of guys don't even own a transmitter for audio they're doing digital work and it's just amazing what's happened to ham radio yeah. so a lot of different things going on and it was and, funny because i was on a cruise a couple of years ago and a guy was sitting in the lobby on a boat in the middle of the ocean on his smartphone <laughs> he said yeah i'm on echo net i'm just uh, doing a little uh, ham i said what huh he said oh yeah you can do it from your smartphone now <laughs> it was like, yes it was wild it was wild yes. 
But we've made this very simple with all the great drawings from Gene, W4IQN, and Chip, K9MIT. Chip does uh, what you're looking at on the screen right now. Chip takes all of the little segments There's, of 10, 12 minutes. They're all videos, puts, yeah. He puts them in a, in a PDF file. So you can go on that Heil Sound site and see all it's of the all things there. It's it's really something. Now, a, a little safety note: when you're talking about the power supply, you're talking about high <laughs> voltage. So please, don't you know? Be very careful. I don't want to lose any listeners when you're doing this. You need to know what you're doing. Read carefully before you launch into this. And if you're if you have a youngster, you absolutely want to make sure that there's adult supervision so that they don't get hurt either. Well, what you need is one of these chip K9 MIT. Uh, we call this the chip stick. <laughs> in the real world of big time broadcast, they call it a Jesus stick. And what you do, you put, you clip this to the ground. Yeah. And then you take this when you turn it off. Yeah. Because after you turn it off, there's still voltage flying uh -oh. around. Yeah. And you take this and touch the you caps. Zap it off. And, it, All right. and you will take care of it. Every program. We talk about that, and it's respecting high voltage. It's all you have to do, respect it. And uh, we have not had any problems Good. with that because we talk about it so yeah. much. And Chip has really come out with the chip stick. He's, he, took, <laughs> he walked around Dayton last year handing them out. <laughs> it looks like it's a wooden paint stirrer with some wires Hi, stapled onto it. I love it. It is from Lowe's. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Heil, they're saying in the chat room, you've created more hams than Smithfield. And I think that that's, that's the well, truth. I don't know. I'm, I'm constantly working. I'm just finishing a two-year project. You're going to hear a lot about this. It's a parametric receive system, complete with a, a speaker that uh, uh, I have some of Paul Klipsch's, uh, uh, my great mentor's thoughts in. Wow. Uh, wow. 25 watt amps. But this is a, a an amazing thing because there's a lot of us uh, that are get older and we have some hearing loss. This will take care of it, but it's we're able to finally make the receiver sound really good. That's so really cool. we're just going crazy on Ham Nation these days, and I, I hope that everybody joins us on those Wednesday nights. Uh, Joe Walsh, WB6ACU, yeah, he, he does a little music thing too, but he's a ham, <laughs> and he's a, he plays the theme. He, he wrote a theme I for I know, it, it's so. a great theme. So Ham Nation, so twit.tv slash HN, Wednesday nights, but you can download it at any time. And before we go, Art Bell passed away uh, not so long ago. I, don't, I know he, Art was a great ham. Uh, he's a silent key now, but did, did you ever get a chance to talk to him? did. I visited yeah. him at his home. He invited me out yeah. to Pahrump. He, uh, when the PR-40 came out, uh, he took all of his RE-20s away and uh, he was using the PR-40 and he was a he was a great guy. He was not crazy, crazy, weird, weird. I I think that was sometime a thing he did on the that air. Was his act. Whenever I yeah. was with him, he yeah. was wonderful. Yeah. He really knew yeah. uh, what it took to, to build transmitters and make them work. Well, W6OBBSK, but uh, he will be missed. And, of course, he was much loved by his fans yeah. and other hams. As are you, Bob Heil, HeilSound.com. To learn more about the Pine Board Project, don't forget to listen to the show. Every Wednesday night, it's on our Twit Podcast Network, and I'm very proud that uh, we've helped you make so many people aware of the very important job that amateur radio uh, does in this country to keep us safe, to keep us informed, and to have a lot of fun and learn about electronics. Yeah. Thanks, Bob Heil. Thank you, Leo. Really great to talk to you. More of your calls still to come. Leo Laporte, The Tech Guy.